Namaste candidates. GARP has made some notable changes in the FRM Part 1 as well as FRM Part 2 curriculum for 2023 versus the previous year. Now, in this video, I am going to discuss the changes which have taken place in FRM Part 1. For Part 2 changes, I will prepare a separate video. So, let's see the changes in FRM Part 1. Now, in Quantitative Analysis Module, in the 7th chapter, QTA 7, Linear Regression, one learning objective has been added. Estimating correlation coefficient from R-square measure in the case of linear regression with a single explanatory variable. Then in QTA 8, the 8th chapter, regression with multiple explanatory variables, one learning objective has been added, which is calculation of R-square using ESS, TSS and RSS. Then in the 12th chapter, measuring return, volatility and correlation, one learning objective has been added, that is comparing and contrasting the different measures of correlation used to assess dependence. Now, interestingly, for all these three learning objectives, the content remains the same as the previous year. So it means that all the concepts related to these particular learning objectives have already been covered in our uh, videos as well as our study material. Now, since GARP has explicitly identified these as learning objectives this time, so it means that the chances of these being tested in the exam are now equal along with other learning objectives as well. Now, the major changes which have taken place in this quantitative analysis module is the addition of two new chapters. The first one is machine learning methods. The new reading which has been introduced, that is the first one. Let's see the learning objectives in this particular uh, reading which has been introduced. The first learning objective is the differences, philosophical and practical differences between machine learning techniques and classical econometrics. Now, it is very important to understand that the approach to model building is quite different using machine learning if you compare it with statistical econometrics. See, machine learning uh, has been developed by engineers rather than statisticians, right? So for classical econometrics, it was generally assumed that the data generating process could be approximated based on some theory, some economic theory, some financial theory. And uh, the job of the analyst was to decide whether the data support the pre-specified theory or not. But machine learning is different. It will actually let the data decide on the best features to include in the model. So these differences have to be discussed. Then the second learning objective, the differences among training set, validation set and test set. Now in conventional econometrics, uh, if you remember a part of data sample is actually retained to test the fitted model so that uh, you know how well it can predict the observations uh, that has not uh, been observed till now, that has not that have not been seen, it can be tested. So sample was divided into two parts, in sample and out of sample. Now, the use of out sample or you can call it at hold out sample is actually even more important in machine learning. But in this case, in case of machine learning, rather than in two parts, the overall sample is usually divided into three parts. One is the training set, validation set and test set, testing set. So all these, of course, all these concepts we are going to see in our lecture videos, the study material that we are going to provide to you. Everything will be discussed in great detail. Now, let's see the third learning objective. Understanding the differences and consequences of underfitting and overfitting. Now, underfitting and overfitting, these are actually problems which were uh, also present in uh, traditional econometr uh, econometrics, regression and all. And in machine learning also, they are present. Of course, the degree to which they affect these two domains are quite different. So, we'll see that uh, when we study these chapters as well. Okay. Next learning objective is using principal components analysis to reduce the dimensionality of a set of features. Now, principal uh, component analysis is a very popular, well-known statistical technique for dimensionality reduction. So it creates a small number of variables which provide almost the same information as a large number of correlated variables. So this is the discussion over here. Now we'll see the K-means algorithm, how it separates a sample into Clusters. Now, K-means algorithm is a very straightforward algorithm to separate observations into clusters. Then uh, we'll be aware of natural language processing and how it is used. 
so natural language processing or you can say nlp it is also sometimes known as text mining so it is basically concerned with analyzing understanding human language both written as well as spoken and it has a number of applications and uses in finance next learning objective of course the three types of uh, models uh, unsupervised supervised and reinforcement learning models these are just the different categories of machine learning methodologies so these will be discussed and explain how reinforcement learning operates and how it is used in decision making so reinforcement learning is mainly about making a series of decisions in a changing environment and it basically uses a trial and error approach so these were the learning objective of uh, QTA 14 the new chapter which has been introduced and uh, if you read these words the first few words of these learning objectives you'll observe discuss explain understand use you know be aware of so all these point towards a more theoretical construct of these chapters so more or less you will be tested on the conceptual and theoretical parts of machine learning methods in the exam Yes, there are a few calculative parts as well in this chapter, like uh, standardization, Euclidean and uh, Manhattan uh, distances, uh, point where the centroid lies, etc. All these things are there, but they are also going to be quite basic. Okay, so overall, it is going to be more of a theoretical chapter where the concepts of machine learning methods have been introduced. Now, let us look at the second major addition, the new chapter which has been introduced is QTA 15, Machine Learning and Prediction. Let us see the learning objectives. The first learning objective is the role of linear regression and logistic regression in prediction. Now, in financial models, categorical variables with two possible outcomes are quite common. Logistic regression or you can say logit specification, they use cumulative logistic function transformation which result in the output being bounded between 0 and 1. So it becomes quite convenient to model the probability of such categorical variables. Second one, the uh, encoding of categorical variables. Encoding is nothing but the process of transforming non-numerical information into numbers. It is also known as mapping sometimes. Next learning objective, discuss. See, again, you observe the learning objectives, explain, understand, discuss. So it's also on the same trend. Discuss why regularization is useful and distinguish between ridge regression and lasso regression. Now, regularization basically ensures that models do not become very large or very complex. And these are the two most common techniques. One is ridge regression and one is least absolute shrinkage and selection operator lasso approach okay so let's see the third one show how a decision tree is constructed and interpreted now a decision tree examines input features sequentially and it is of course called a decision tree because it can be represented as a tree okay next learning objective describe how ensembles of learners are built Constructing ensembles, uh, ensembles of learners sorry, involves using a range of different models and combining their outputs into a single meta model that is ensembling basically. Next learning objective, outline the intuition <clears throat> behind the k nearest neighbors and support vector machine methods for classification. K nearest neighbors is a simple model, simple technique that can be used for either classification or preserving the value of a variable and SVM support vector machines are a class of uh, models that are suited to classification problems when there are very large number of features. Then understanding how neural networks are constructed and how their weights are determined. Now artificial neural networks they actually are loosely modeled on how the brain performs the computation. So deal, uh, they deal with how the brain performs the computation. Next, evaluate the predictive performance of logistic regression models and neural network models using a confusion matrix. 
when the output variable is a categorical variable binary categorical variable then a common way to evaluate the model is through calculations based on a confusion matrix what is a confusion matrix it is nothing but a 2 by 2 matrix which shows the possible outcomes and whether the predicted answer was correct or not so as i said if you see the first words of these learning objectives you'll again find that this chapter is also uh, you know less calculative and more conceptual more theoretical in nature now the final change which has uh, taken place in frm part 1 is in this chapter vrm 16 option sensitivity measures the greeks where one learning objective has been modified so this was the old learning objective describe delta hedging for an option forward and futures contracts and the new learning objective is describing the delta hedging of an option only now again interestingly the content remains the same if you compare it with the 2022 book of garb the curriculum has not changed earlier also only delta hedging for an option was discussed so they have rephrased this learning objective to make it consistent with the curriculum so these are the changes which have taken place in the frm part one curriculum now we have also prepared this excel sheet where you can compare the exact wordings of the 2022 learning objectives versus the 2023 learning objective and in the changes column if there are any changes it will be written as no changes if there are any any changes then of course the corresponding change will be written whether the learning objective has been added modified or the new reading has been introduced I'll ensure that uh, the summary file, the PDF file, as well as this Excel sheet is available for all of you to download and uh, uh, it will be attached to the description of the video as a link. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any queries, please do not hesitate to contact us over WhatsApp or visit our website directly. Thank you so much for watching. Namaste.